you could fill just an eight ounce glass with anything in the world, what would you fill it with? Something that the world, ice cream, you get the idea. Anything that the world can offer you, what would you fill that eight ounce glass with? So I'm going right here and let's see what you say. Water, fruits, peaches, green juice. Okay, that's, that's good. Water, orange juice, mango. Oh, somebody understands one of my favorite fruits there, mango. Uh, love, carrot juice. Oh, I'm doing lots of carrot juice for my wife these days. Cranberry juice, uh, warm water, grape juice, a smoothie. Oh, this is making me thirsty. A smoothie of fruit, uh, orange juice, gold dust. Oh, that's a good one. Lemon juice. Well, that'd be hard to drink uh, at eight ounces of lemon juice. Anybody else have something that you would fill, you'd want to fill it up if you could pick anything in the entire world? Fresh coconut water. Now, that's hard to beat. That's really good. Pineapple juice. I had that as a little boy in, in Hawaii where I grew up. Uh, water. Anybody else have something not mentioned yet? Health. Well, that'd be hard to fill it up with health, but if you could, that'd be wonderful. Faith. Okay. Coral juice. I don't know what that is, but I would like to try it. Peace. And on it goes. Cranberry juice. My friends, I wanted us to think about what we would fill that glass up with and you came up with all kinds of wonderful ideas did you notice that most of us most of us mentioned things that you could eat or drink right most of us did and uh oh someone just said laughter oh that's beautiful too from the fiji islands oh when i met friends in uh from fiji uh they taught me how to laugh and sing all over again praise the lord <laughs> good so we have all kinds of blessings here that we would we would uh, put into a glass. Now, this is a perfect setup now for reading about what happened in Pentecost. But our danger on this evening as we read this is for us to read it only as a story that happened long, long ago. To read it and go like this, in a sense, clap our hands, give applause and say, isn't it wonderful that that happened long ago? But my friends, I'm now going to send us back to our prayer rooms for five minutes. Five minutes. Why? Because we must pray that the Holy Spirit would prepare our hearts to be moved by this story and moved by this story, inspired by this story, and challenged by this story that what God did 2,000 years ago, he is most ready to do again, even now. Amen, everybody? Amen. So Amen. five minutes, Amen. five minutes, let's go and pray for readiness in our hearts. Go and pray for the Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts for this, this passage in Acts 2, 1, 2, 4. See you in five minutes. あ、ひろさんおはようございます。ひろさんです。えっと、はい。えっと、この、あの、これからの5分間なんですが、えっと、これからペンテコストについてお話しますけど、その話を、えっと、ま、心の準備をのために、えっと、その聖霊を受けられ
Father, we need you to open our spiritual eyes and our spiritual hearts, our minds, our ears, Lord, so that we can hear what you're teaching us. Give us understanding and knowledge and wisdom and discernment. Amen. Yes, Father, you told us to hide the word in our hearts that we do not sin against you. And I'm looking forward to receiving this word that we hide in my heart. Amen. Amen. Oui, Seigneur, remplis-nous de ton Esprit Saint et dispose-nous à recevoir ce message du pasteur Don. Amen. Amen. Oui, Seigneur, remplis mon, mon verre de ton Esprit Saint et que je puisse marcher avec toi et que je puisse travailler pour toi. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant Amen. us your Holy Spirit today and every day and every moment in our lives. Father, Amen. Amen. Father, I pray you would remove every distraction and and mm -hmm. please, Lord, take our undivided attention right now and remove every force of darkness that may want to prevent us from learning mm -hmm. what you want to teach us. Amen. Amen. Father God, I pray that you may make my heart receptive to the teaching of the Holy Spirit. And Father, I also pray there, Lord, that I may not just keep it to myself, but Lord, I may be able to um, impart it to someone else, I pray. Amen. Amen. Father, you told us that your word would not return unto your void, and I believe that what we will hear in a moment's time would truly change and transform our lives. Amen. 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 Father, I pray for the spirit of Pentecost to fall upon us afresh, Lord, that we would be empowered by this Holy Spirit in latter rain power, Father. Um, but we are united with one accord right now. Amen. Oui, Seigneur, répands ton esprit d'unité sur chacun d'entre nous. Amen. Amen. That is by your word that you spoke the word into being and it's just the power that would really bring us to repentance. I pray, Lord, that you be with our um, pastor and so you give us his word and you speak to him that uh, the things that we continue to do that beset us, that the message this evening will cause us to repent totally. Amen. 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 Okay, I think we're back. Okay, are we all back? Looks like we could be. Okay, my friends. Ah, wasn't it a joy to pray together? Aren't you glad for the freedom to pray Amen. together? Amen. We will, Amen. we will not always have the freedom Amen. to pray together online. We'll not always have the freedom to pray to Let's continue to pray for the technical support. Oh. Oh, there you to are. cherish this, this praying time together is very, very precious. Now, let's go right to the word of God. And uh, yes, whoever was starting to pray, uh, just be praying always for technology. Uh, by the way, I was supposed to go to a meeting.
to train Elisha's right after this meeting. And the devil knows it. And uh, he arranged for that house to be struck by lightning uh, last night and no internet to the place where I'm supposed to go next after this meeting to meet with Elisha's all around the world that want to grow as Elisha's. And so Satan is full of wrath, but Can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Wow. Yes. We have to just keep praying. Mm. Okay. Let's go to Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. Would someone read that, please? Acts 2, 1 to 4. Yes, please. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Two, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Three, then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. Four, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them a tyrance. Amen. Thank you, sister. So let's just look at a few things here. Where was everybody when Pentecost happened? Where were they? Where were the believers? In the room. Room. In the upper yes. room. Yes. Amen. The upper room. They were together. Yes. They were together yes. in one place. Mm -hmm. This is what we struggle with in these last days. We don't like to be together. We like to do our own thing, right? They were together in one place. Wow. They had been together in one place for 10 days. They had been praying together, making things right together. Uh, they were confessing their sins to God. They were forgiving each other in one room for 10 days. Praise be the name of Jesus. He is the only one that can draw People like Peter and James and John together in one place. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's the only one, by the way, that can draw all the delegates together this week. Jesus is the only one that can draw delegates together that have all kinds of ideas and represent all kinds of cultures. Jesus Christ is the only one who can do that with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so Jesus loves to do this. And he loves to do it in your life and in my life. He loves to gather his people to pray and to be united around him. Now, while they were praying, and this is after 10 days of this, that suddenly from heaven, a noise came and the wind, a violent rushing wind filled. How much of the house? Look at verse two. How much of the house was filled? The whole house. The whole house was filled. Yes. And there's another interesting word, uh, a number, uh, verse three, and the fire came down and it rested on how many of them? Each of them. Each of them. Each of them. In, in verse four, how many were filled with the Holy Spirit? Four. All. 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 The Holy Spirit. Yes. yes. How many of them were speaking in tongues? So that everybody could know the good news of Jesus that couldn't understand their language. Oh, all. They all were. All of them. So this, these four verses show that when the Holy Spirit comes with power to God's people collectively, he loves to fill the whole room, the whole room. He loves to, he loves to come upon and in everybody. He loves to empower everybody. He doesn't just do it in batches, right? He loves to Please. do this collectively when God's people come together. Now, I am going to share something with my conviction right now. And that is sometimes we as believers in these last days, 
are looking forward, forward, forward to the latter rain. And we are crying out to God for the day when our local church or our whole world church will have this experience. Sometimes we are looking forward, forward, forward to that day. And we are bypassing what Jesus wants to do with the Holy Spirit today, right now. Are you following me, my friends, my brothers, my sisters? And so with the short time we have, I'm going to go very, very fast in Scripture. Because again, a couple of days ago, I mentioned it. I'm going to mention to you again, Jesus Christ, according to a Christ Optic Lessons, Jesus Christ daily received a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Daily. Now, if you and I... Can't hear you. Please pray for Pastor Don and the technology. Amen. 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 Dear Father in heaven, may you be present for all of us at White. Pastor Don, this is this. Amen. Pastor Function, come so. back. Thank you. So Amen. sometimes, sometimes we are excited about what God will do in the future. And we're excited about thinking about having power from the Holy Spirit to share Jesus all around the world. We get excited about those stories, thinking about taking the good news of the soon coming Savior into countries of the world that have almost no Christians, much less the, the end time good news of, about Jesus. But sometimes we're looking so much forward that we are forgetting that the gift of the Holy Spirit is also for each one of us individually now. Amen? Amen. Now. Amen. Now, I mentioned this week already that the Holy Spirit has already been present and always been present ever since the beginning of time for this little planet. The Holy Spirit hovered over the waters and in the the first book of all books, Genesis, right? Verse 2, he hovered over the waters. We mentioned uh, yesterday how the Holy Spirit came upon Gideon and he blew the trumpet. He came upon Jephthah and he was he was willing to go back to the place of his shame and go and, and rally the troops of God to do what God called him to do. He came upon Samson and he did mighty, mighty acts. And down through time, he has come upon people. But again, Pentecost was oh God, we pray. Father. That you will put that. Just pray. Pray silently behind Amen. the scenes, please. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Amen. Okay, yes. praise the Lord. Okay. Well, we definitely have an adversary, and we definitely have Jesus, which is stronger than Amen. We just keep going. Amen. We don't let him win. Okay? Amen. And so in Acts 1, verses 4 and 5, which we mentioned just a few days ago, it says, Jesus is saying this, and he says, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said was heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. My friends, he promised that the believers would be baptized by the Spirit of God. We know from Spirit of Prophecy that Jesus was baptized by the Spirit of God every day. My friends, you and I should be asking for and receiving this gift every day by faith. This is what Jesus longs for you and me to have. Now, do you have your Bibles ready? We're going to go very, very fast. I wish that I had a whole week just on this subject, but I don't. We have a whole week to go through 
uh, the first several chapters of the book of Acts. But go with me right now to the Gospel of John. Gospel of John. What needs to be in place so that we can be baptized by the Spirit of God? John chapter 7. John chapter 7. And verse 38. 37, I should say. John 7, 37. Okay, here's what it says. Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried out saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Look at the glass, the picture that you drew. Are you thirsty for more of the Holy Spirit today? Where, whether you're, you're in Asia somewhere right now, or Africa, Australia, or South America, or North America, or Europe, or wherever you are, my friends, are you thirsty for the Spirit of God? Or are you just comfortable? Am I just comfortable with knowing what I know about Jesus? You see, this Verse 37, Jesus cried out and he says, is anyone thirsty? If anyone's thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the spirit. And we'll just stop there. He spoke of the spirit. My friends, if you want to be receiving the daily baptism of the Holy Spirit, then let us believe in Jesus Christ. Now, even the devils believe that Christ exists. You know, Scripture says the devil believes and trembles. So it's not enough just to say, oh, I believe that Jesus is someone out there. No. Jesus is asking us to believe in him for who he is. Jesus is our best friend. He's our elder brother. He's our savior. He is our Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords. Do you believe in Jesus that way? That's a prerequisite to receiving the daily baptism of the Holy Spirit. Believe in Jesus for who he is and be thirsty for him to the point that you come to Jesus every day to drink, to receive him. That's, that is all part of the first prerequisite of having that daily baptism of the Holy Spirit. Do you have it? Is that clear? Now I'm going to go fast. Yes. Let's go to Acts 2. Acts 2. Now, when the apostle Peter was praying, and not praying, preaching, I mean, and Acts 2, uh, we come down to verse 37. And when the people heard him preaching about Jesus, that they had crucified Jesus themselves, they cried out and they said, Brethren, what shall we do? And in chapter 2, verse 38, Peter said to them, Repent, each one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. My friends, sometimes you and I want the power of the Holy Spirit, but we don't want the sacrifice that he's calling us for. The sacrifice is to repent of what you and I love to do, but that makes Jesus Christ weep. Do you hear me, my friends? Repentance is not just a little adjustment from, from going, if this is going the wrong way, repentance is not just turning a little ways. If this is going the wrong way, if I'm going this way, and Jesus is saying, Don McLafferty, repent of your attitude or repent of what you're doing, then it means an about face. Jesus wants us to turn our backs on what he's convicting us of through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he wants us to run to Jesus Christ. Amen. And so my friends, if there is someone online right now, and you know the spirit of God is convicting you of something, something that's out of place, the second prerequisite for receiving this baptism of the Holy Spirit, this fullness of the Holy Spirit is repent, is repent. And my friends, if you say in your heart right now, if you're saying, oh, Pastor Don doesn't know what I'm convicted of. It's too hard for me to let go. Remember Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. Remember that we can cry out and say, God, I don't have the will or the heart to repent. So give me a new heart and put a new spirit within me and take out my heart of stone towards something that needs changing and give me a heart of flesh. And Jesus is so ready to do that, my friends. No one here listening to this message needs to be discouraged about repenting. Repenting 
is not even something that you and I can do on our own power. It's only through the power of Jesus and brought to our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So then he says, repent and be baptized. Now, if you have children in your life, teenagers in your life, uh, a friend in your life who loves Jesus but hasn't been baptized yet, sometimes I will have young and old friends come up to me and say, Pastor Don, are you saying that God's word teaches that if I am not baptized, that I can't have the full gift of the Holy Spirit? I can't have the Holy Spirit at all? And I listen closely. When I answer that for a child or someone not baptized, I say, my friend, we have the evidence in Scripture from Genesis all the way through the Bible that the Holy Spirit loves to work with anybody and everybody. Amen? Amen. He does work with Amen. anybody and everybody. In fact, he can even work in the life of someone who does not claim Christ. You know? So I, I never discourage a child and say, no, you, the Holy Spirit is not working in your life. Let me tell you, children, uh, children can love Jesus and be drawn to Jesus. And have a heart more for Jesus than you and I as adults can have. Amen? They can. They can be more hungry for Christ than us. So what does it mean when it says, repent and be baptized, and then you'll receive this gift? My friends, the Holy Spirit loves to be an influence in anybody's life, even before baptism. He is an influence. But for the person who is baptized, we know that is a signal to heaven. That through Christ, when you go under that water, it's saying death to an old life. And when you come up out of the water and the water is dripping down from that immersion moment, you are alive in Christ. Amen? Amen. Alive in Christ. And the message to heaven is, is Father in heaven, through the gift of Jesus Christ, I am all yours. So it's like you're declaring yourself, right, to the world. I am all for Christ. And then we know that that's a signal from heaven to give you that second baptism of the Holy Spirit. Think about Jesus. When he came up out of the water, what came down? What came down upon him? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. uh, The Holy Spirit wasn't a dove, isn't a dove, but he came down like a dove, Scripture says. Are you tracking with me? And so Jesus was baptized by water all the way under. And when he came up, he was baptized again by the Spirit of God. This is, this is who he was. This is who he is today, my friends. So baptism is the third prerequisite for receiving this incredible uh, gift of the Holy Spirit in fullness. Now, let's go right now to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. I'm going quick. I warned you I'd be going quick here. In Acts 5, would someone read verse 32? What's another prerequisite for receiving this incredible gift? And we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Yes. The Holy Spirit is given to those who what? Obey him. Obey Obey him. Sometimes we act like obedience is a dirty word. My friends, we have sometimes acted like obedience is a terrible thing. Well, obedience never saved anybody, but obedience is the result of what Jesus does in our life. Jesus sets up shop in my heart, in your heart, and Jesus is our obedience. Jesus is our life. Are you tracking? Yes. Obedience is not a bad thing. Obedience does not save us, but obedience is like, it's like the wake behind the boat. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. I don't know what kind of boats you have in the country you're representing, but let me draw you a very, very quick picture right here. And I want you to think about this real quick. Okay. If a boat, now this is like an aerial view. Like if you're, if you're flying over a lake and you see like a, a boat going through, just a simple like a fishing boat. Let's say that it's going this way through the water. Then what comes out back behind the boat as it's going right through, cutting through the water? What comes out here? Waves. There's, we call it the wake, right? It's like two waves come right here because water is being displaced. 
My friends, when we as a believer have our eyes fixed on Jesus, which the book of Hebrews tells us he is the author and the finisher of our faith, the result of such a life is obedience and the fruits of the spirit and a living witness for Christ. All these things are the result of who Jesus is in our life. It's the result of having our salvation in Christ. Never put the wake in front of the boat. Amen? Amen. The wake, obedience, flows out of the Christian who has Christ living in their life. Fourth prerequisite is obedience. Obey. My friends, be careful. And I'm preaching to myself right now, too. As Seventh-day Adventists, living in these last days, sometimes we pride ourselves that we go to church on the right day. Hallelujah. Because Hallelujah. there is a right day to worship him on. But my friends, sometimes we pride ourselves of the knowledge that we have in these last days. But sometimes in saying that we obey these big things in the Ten Commandments, we have forgotten that the Holy Spirit is looking for believers who will simply obey through the day he -hmm. wants to whisper to your heart and my heart he wants to whisper to us and say i want you to walk across the road and i want you to share your faith with that person you don't even know that's a Mm -hmm. that's a that is an issue of obedience he might whisper to you and me stop watching what you're watching stop uh thinking what you're thinking stop speaking that way to your spouse or to your children these are issues of obedience just as much as keeping the seventh day holy. In other words, obedience is obedience. Like when he, he calls you, when he calls me, he wants us to say, yes, Lord, right? And, and so let us, and I'm preaching to myself, God help us to have a humble heart to be obedient last day people, not to save us, but because Jesus is our salvation. Let the, the Savior through the power of the Holy Spirit, be our obedience, moment by moment. Hallelujah, that Jesus is ready to be our obedience through our Hallelujah. lives. Hallelujah. Now, the fifth one is maybe the simplest prerequisite. But when I ask around the world, when I ask people, are you asking for the Holy Spirit and receiving? Hmm, sometimes I get yeses and sometimes no. Let's go to Luke 11. Luke 11. Luke 11. In Luke 11, we go to verse 13. Luke 11, 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? My friends, we need to ask for this gift. Some people say to me, well, I asked, I asked maybe on the day of my baptism, isn't that good enough? That's like someone saying, I told my wife, I love you when I married you, but isn't that enough? My friends, we need to ask and keep on asking what Jesus said in the passage right before it. And when he is talking about uh, asking and receiving in verses nine and 10, he says, so I say to you, ask and it'll be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and it'll be open to you. The, the whole uh, use of the word in Greek is ask and keep on asking, knock and keep on knocking, seek and keep on seeking. Are you hearing me? Yes. And so when Jesus, after that passage of inviting us, challenging us, commanding us even to ask, when he talks about the Holy Spirit, let us not just ask for the Holy Spirit one time. Let us ask for the Holy Spirit again and again, day by day and saying, God, I'm thirsty for the Holy Spirit again. So I'm running to Jesus as the author and finisher of my faith so I can drink him up. And we're saying, oh God, I'm repenting by the grace of Christ, not by my power. I'm repenting, returning to you with all my heart with what you have shown me. And if I have been baptized, we say, God, thank you for calling us to baptism. If we have not been baptized yet, if there's anybody right now watching And you know the truth, you know Jesus, which is the truth, but you have made a decision for him in your heart, but you haven't followed through with water baptism. Let it be done. Let it be done soon. Don't put it off. And then number four is to obey. And that still small voice says to you, 
Dawn or put your own name in it, Jane or whatever your name is. This is the way. Walk in it. It is to say, by the grace of God only, because we have no power to obey. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. By your strength, I will obey. By your power, I will obey. I have no righteousness, but you're my righteousness. So help me obey. Be my obedience. And finally, to ask, to say, God, I am simply asking for what Jesus told me you are eager to give. Just like a daddy likes to give good gifts to his children. Oh, my friends, many times over the years, I've come back from mission trips around the world. And my kids would say, daddy's home when the kids were little. Daddy's home. And it was, they would hug me and kiss me. And then they would start looking around. I said, are you looking for something? What are you looking for? Did you lose something? No, daddy. We, we didn't lose anything. But we're wondering, did you bring us something? And I would usually bring them a little magnet or some little, some little thing that was handcrafted in that country of, of um, South Africa or wherever, uh, Korea, wherever, something to remind them that I was thinking of them. Oh, my friends, as much as I love doing that for our kids, as much as a good daddy loves to give any child gifts, our father is ready right now to give you and me this gift. These, these five prerequisites, I invite you to practice between now and tomorrow. Now, please look on the schedule because tomorrow I have a seminar first at seven o'clock. I won't be here at the regular time at seven o'clock. So I'll be a little bit later. Uh, the host can tell us that schedule for sure tomorrow, but, but, uh, we will carry on tomorrow. But for right now, I want to close by praying for this precious gift. And how many of you will just raise your hands and signal that will you be willing to take these five prerequisites and take them to prayer privately between now and when we meet again tomorrow? If I see your hands, good. I see many, many hands up. Praise God for that, because this is not meant to be theory. This is meant to be practiced in your life and in my life now. Let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, this simple message comes from the powerful written word of God, your word. Now, God, I believe and we believe here that what you did at Pentecost for the church at large, for the early believers, you are ready to do in these last days. But, oh, God, your spirit has impressed me to impress us this afternoon. Let us, while we're waiting and praying for and seeking after that latter rain, let us also be thirsty and hungry and crying out for that special baptism of the Holy Spirit personally, daily, now. And God, do this work in me. Do this work in us now, we pray. And prepare us for our whole church to come together that way in these final end times and to have a power that we've never had before to declare you. But let us start now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Don. We hope amen. to see you again tomorrow. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Don. God bless you all. And God I'll see you, you tomorrow. Amen. Amen.